Did you know that research estimates 5% of the population suffers from narcissistic personality disorder? However, only about 1 in 20 of those people within that 5% are actually diagnosed. Today we're going to be discussing three red flags, characteristics, and warnings of narcissism. For those of you, if it's your first time, I welcome you. For those of you, if you're back, welcome back. My name is Joe. I'm an entrepreneur, investor, business, life, and relationship coach. All right, guys, welcome to week three of the series. Today, we're going to be going over an additional three warning signs, red flags, traits, and characteristics of narcissism. One's not more important than the other, although it kind of dives a little deeper and scratching below that surface to the obvious ones that you can just Google or maybe you see. So I want to kind of get right into it because I kind of learned a lot through the process of having intimate relationships with some who they are not so important. But if you guys ever want to share your story, drop it below in the comments or always reach out to me directly. I mean, I'm always willing to to listen and it's nice to know that we're not always alone in this, right? So I know a lot of times, and you may have heard this before, there's always that they want to be the center of attention and obsession with image, right? But I think it's kind of taken the wrong way because when we think obsession with image, we think they want to look handsome or beautiful and plastic surgery and going over the top with buying expensive things and fancy cars. And yeah, sometimes I guess that could be the case. But what I realized was obsession with image. I know they say that certain narcissistic people don't think there's anything wrong with them, but I don't really agree. I think they subconsciously know they don't treat people properly. I just don't think they care. But what I did notice is any time there's a third party around to judge them, they always want to make sure they do not look, how do I put this? like a narcissist or crazy or out of line. So they're always gonna shift it. They can go from screaming at you two seconds ago to snapping up straight and talking logical to someone because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who it is or what it is. They don't wanna be perceived as the person that's wrong, the person that's acting out and the person that looks crazy. So you'll see them shift from zero to a hundred to snap themselves and go from one place to another just to make themselves and give the party or those people that impression that they're the person that they want them to be. I know it sounds asinine, but if you've ever dealt with someone where maybe they were just screaming at you two seconds ago and then you get someone on the phone or maybe they think that you're recording them or they think that there's someone on the phone or a friend walks in and all of a sudden they turn into a completely different person because they don't want anyone to know what they were doing. Number two, guys, and this one is pretty obvious, but you'll notice that narcissistic people tend to be very arrogant. And what do we mean by arrogance? Because it's a broad spectrum of it, right? There's a pretty big umbrella. Arrogance can kind of fall under a lot of things, but what I've noticed is they tend to claim they know everything. Have you ever gotten a conversation with someone where you can tell that they don't know what they're talking about, but they're just kind of spitting shit to make it seem like they know what they're talking about because they're just too embarrassed to admit that maybe they don't know what they're talking about and maybe they need to do a little self-work and learn about it. Hey, normal response is that's okay. I'm not a pro on this thing. I'm not really sure. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but you know, I'm not really too, too short. Maybe you want to ask someone that knows about it. Nope. These people know everything regardless of what the circumstances and no matter how much you know, they always know better. And shame on you to think that you know better than them because you want to go tit for tat. They'll make sure they let you know that they know better. Even if they don't know what they're saying or what they're talking about, they still know better than you, right? As we know, they're never wrong. Even if you could put the proof right in front of them, they've still got an excuse, answer, or a logical reason as to discredit what you just put in front of them and why ultimately they're right. So they're going to take you down that rabbit hole all the way around the trail. It's come and bite you in the ass. The arrogance to not be able to admit that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's areas of improvement. Maybe I should take the constructive criticism to realize that uh, I can be better. That's too easy, right? The downfall of it is, is that the arrogance that they have is that they always genuinely think they're better and smarter than everyone around them, even if they don't say it. And it's funny because I did notice that some of these people are smart, but they're really not all that smart. So. If you approach it the right way, it's actually very easy to outsmart them because they tend to be all about their ego and their arrogance. 
So if you're feeding that ego and arrogance, it opens up their vulnerability to actually be able to outsmart them. Because if they think they're outsmarting you in the moment, when you actually know what their game is about and you understand it, you can then outsmart them based on their ego and their arrogance, if that makes sense. We're gonna dive deeper into that in a different video to kind of explain what that means. Um, but we do know that narcissistic people tend to think that there's no consequences for their actions and they thrive off of control and they thrive off of admiration and they thrive off of that supply. So if you're giving them that supply just to kind of outsmart them, you'll realize that they're not smart enough to pick up on the fact that you're doing that to kind of turn the tables on them. Third and final one, guys, and this is my absolute favorite one because I love to have fun with this. Oh, when I say zero and just about zero, negative a thousand zero, whatever you want to call it, there is zero accountability. And if there is any sort of accountability, there's always an excuse with that accountability. I'll admit what I did, but I did it because you did this to me, or it rained that day, or the sun was in my eyes, or, you know, I didn't have the right conditions. There's always an excuse along with accountability, if there's any you're going to realize that these people freak out over any sort of criticism. They immediately get defensive, they get angry, they get upset, and the world's always against them and they're always a victim. And this is the biggest thing. It's always the victim mentality. And the biggest red flag when, you talk, when I talk about zero accountability is these people tend to have nothing to really show for themselves in terms of like achievement and whatnot. Um, maybe a career, maybe friends, maybe family. I mean, we can tell that a lot of these people typically don't have friends and many people that are close to them because they can't maintain normal relationships because most people will set boundaries and go. But like I said, they'll have nothing to really show for themselves concrete that they've built on their own, maybe on the backs of other people, but not on their own. But you will notice the biggest thing about it. No matter who they were in a relationship with, no matter who they were friends with, no matter who their family members are, and no matter who they dealt with at work, et cetera, et cetera, how many jobs they've had or things that they've done, they're always the victim. Every person, every step along the way of their life was either unfair to them, took advantage of them, was mean to them, lied to them, and they all these things happen to them and nothing's worked out for them because people have just mistreated them their entire lives. Now there's actually people out there that probably did get some bad breaks and, and don't fall under this category, but I think you'll know the difference. Um, you seem smart, you seem funny, and we know that narcissism always comes with a lot of charisma, charismatic people. How come you don't have a lot of friends? Or how come, oh, well, you know, I'm different, I like to be alone. Or I had friends and they did me wrong and every relationship they had they were always perfect and that's the biggest thing too guys No one's perfect. I could tell you at times. I'm gonna be a fucking shit show in a relationship. I'm not perfect I have my issues, but the most important thing is After a relationship ends or after we lose a job or after something happens We're able to sit down and get super honest with ourselves and self-reflect and say okay I wasn't my best self at this point or maybe I should approach something differently here what steps could I take to get better to do that? The difference is, is when something happens and it's not deserved necessarily, but let's say you screw up at work knowing that you're going to screw up and you lose your job because you had a warning. That's on you to self-reflect and say, okay, maybe next time I need to make a better effort to start showing up to work on time or not calling out as much or not acting a certain way, whatever it is. Narcissism will fall into throw that stuff away. None of that matters. My coworkers were unfair to me. It was a hostile work environment. It was toxic. My boss wasn't fair. I was mistreated. I was targeted. I was taken advantage of. There's always going to be a thousand excuses, but the problem is these people are never going to get out of this hole because until they can set their mind apart and set themselves down and have a logical conversation with themselves in terms of how do I get better and what do I need to do? And that's when self-development starts to really excel in certain people when they can get honest with themselves and admit that there's always areas of improvement. If you go through life blaming everyone for everything, you're never going to get anywhere. But you're going to notice a pattern 
Okay, I'm kind of getting off basis here, so let's get let's get back. What I was trying to say is no accountability. They'll never sit themselves down and say, this is where I need to improve. They may say it just to appease you to get what they want out of you temporarily, but it's never actually going to happen. They don't ever genuinely think anything's wrong and they think everything's perfect. I want to thank you guys for joining me for another episode. There's many more to come. If you haven't already, like and subscribe so you don't miss another video. If you haven't checked out the channel, there's a lot of motivational and self-improvement content on the channel as well. Looking forward to seeing you guys for the next episode next week. Check you next week.